Hello, dear viewer. A little bit ago, I made a video called Do the Dumb for Fun, where I completed a character creation challenge based off of the specs of my phone. It was very spur of the moment, and the editing took three times longer than the actual drawing, but it was really fun. So I did it again. This time with one randomized challenge using dice, and another using personal stats. Credit to the original creators. I'll be honest with you guys, I actually don't remember why I started these two. Both files were made in October of last year at 2 in the morning. Most likely I was taking a break working on one of my seasonal projects and forgot about them. It happens. Not every project you start needs to be finished. Some things can stay whips and just fade away as stepping stones to a greater goal. Unless you can make a video out of it. This year is all about monetizing the hell out of everything your brain barks off. Let's go! Since rolling dice is for gamblers and nerds, here are the stats I rolled off rip. Our first character, we have a... Woman in her teen years, or at least young looking. She has long blonde hair with golden eyes and darker chocolatey skin. These things get weird so fast. She is of average build and is from the Victorian era with this as her base color palette. I was very excited to get started on this one, but f before I could, I wanted to roll a few extra characters from different sheets in case I got stuck and needed to shift gears. Our second character is based off of the aforementioned personal stats maker and got literally the exact opposite of myself. A man with blonde hair and green eyes, cottage core aesthetic in his, on his younger side, a loving exterior, and an elemental person? We'll figure that out later. Now, I can't really explain what happened next. It just kind of jumped out at me. But looking at their stats and imagining what their bases would be, my brain put them right next to each other and said, they are a couple. And the whole thing just came to me. Their dynamic, their history, the fact that he always calls her ma'am or Ms. even though she assures him that he can just use her first name. The only thing I didn't figure out was their names, since I didn't have an actual official story to put them in at the time. Suggest names in the comments below. Since these two are going to be a couple, or at least an endgame couple, I knew I needed to design them to complement each other, in both shape and color. And since this whole project was based on vibes, I booted up a cottagecore playlist and got to researching, because 90% of character design is research. The initial mental image in my head of them was that she was a lady of higher standing in a fancy dress and gloves, while he was a simple farmer that was sweet on her. I didn't know at the time how they knew each other, but the idea of them walking together in their polar opposite outfits would not leave my head, so I made it work. Him being a farmer, or at least a worker on a farm, helped me not worry too much about what he would look like, yet I got started on her. Given our lady's fashionable sensibilities, I wanted to match her with an authentic Victorian dress which Swan dives into our first struggle of the challenge, as most every Victorian dress is either monochrome, which wouldn't fit her color palette, or had a floral pattern and lace, lace, lace. Every time I start a design inspired or set in Victorian England, I go, yeah, no. Lace can be overcome by tactfully placed texture on the overlay settings, but the ruffles, the ruffles! On top of all that, I couldn't just pick any random dress on Pinterest and call it good. Any sensible woman, regardless of class, had multiple dresses for all sorts of occasions, which had their own rules and etiquette. I couldn't very well put her in a morning wrapper while she was out on a stroll in on town. The indecency! So I settled on a country gown as it would make sense for her to be wearing that while interacting with our farm boy, and not just because they're the most simplistic of the lot. While searching for a suitable dress, this one popped up. While it's probably not the most historically authentic, it's not nearly frumpy enough, I liked the shape of it and switched out the bows for fabric roses. I'll explain later.
while sketching the base, I started on our farm boy's outfit. One nitpick I have with some designs and search engines in general is when you look up what clothing was like in a certain era, they mostly showcase the high fashion of the time and not what everyday people wore. And I get it. The higher end of fashion would be more documented and therefore more well known, but I'm getting a little tired of people designing a Victorian character and only draw them in a sweeping silk gown. I say as I spent two hours of my life researching and drawing Victorian fashion etiquette for a household lady. Ranting aside, I looked into what farmer or a field worker in 1849 would look like and and stumbled across this beautiful painting by, oh god, um, Edouard Bernard de Bar Pensant? I don't know, man, he's French. They don't pronounce the last consonant of every word. The painting itself is very captivating with its soft colors and lighting, so I looked into the artist to verify my sources. And when I say I went down a rabbit hole about this guy, I went down a rabbit hole trying to find all his pieces and adding him to my pantheon of favorite painters. Also, the mustache on this guy. This is all a roundabout way of saying the piece captivated me, so I had to reference it in the final piece. Then came the color swatching. Since our fair lady already had a palette picked out, I decided to match his color palette to hers in a complimentary way to denote them as a couple for the story. She had a green top and blue accent hat, so I gave him a green vest and a navy blue hat, but slightly less saturated. With the logistics aside, I, I could now focus on one element of his character I was avoiding, and that was his assigned elemental powers. This stumped me. At first, I thought I would go the metaphorical route, you know? Make him a talented farmer with an affinity for nature, but that wouldn't really leave room for our fair lady's golden eyes and hair. So I decided to do a bit of world building. In the fantasy land where these two reside, everyone has some sort of elemental power. Not the usual water, fire, air, broad, vague concept of elements, but one particular aspect of nature that they must get creative with. I had decided along the way that our fair lady owns the farm our farm boy works on. And, rather than having the ability to control plant growth, I elected she would have the ability to manipulate pollen as a reference to her golden features. While her farm would produce plentiful crops such as fruits, vegetables, and flowers, her main output would be honey that had medicinal properties. And if I was a sensible character designer, I would have given her more bee-like aspects in her design. However, bees are not the only pollinators, so I'll let it slide. Now for our farm boy. Earlier in his design, I, I gave him a face full of freckles and semi-permanent sunburn to showcase his lifestyle. But with the added elemental factor I worked in, and with his palette being mostly green, I researched how photosynthesis worked. Now, we all know that when a plant takes in sunlight, they turn that light into energy in the form of glucose. Said glucose feeds the plant and helps them grow. I first thought of giving him some form of glucose-related powers, but glucose is basically a form of sugar that all living things need to live. While the idea of giving a simple farmer the most OP ability to manipulate the energy level of all living things is tempting, I wanted to stay with the color theming. Going back to photosynthesis, the entire process of growing plants is dependent on their chlorophyll. You know, the part that makes the plant green. By being able to manipulate the chlorophyll of any plant, our farm boy helps the crops grow at a steady pace and heals any leaf damage. He has a green thumb? That's it, I'm firing my speechwriter. Thank you.
that's about all I have written in my notes. I still have no idea what the story is, or even what their names are. And as I'm writing the script, I just realized these two are the perfect Wesley and Buttercup. That day, she was amazed to discover that when he was saying, as you wish, what he meant was, I love you. And even more amazing was the day she realized she truly loved him back. If you haven't seen The Princess Bride, what are you doing with your life? It is the most beautiful, romantic, corny camp fest of a movie you'll ever see. Fangirling aside, I am quite pleased with how these two came out. I might do a few more of these in the future, but don't hold your breath on that. I started working on another challenge involving music, and... Well, that's gonna take me a while. So in the meantime, if you liked what you saw today, be sure to let me know with a like and a comment. If you have any name suggestions for these beauties, shout them out there as well. I try to post a video on Thursdays, but videos take me a while for me to make. So if you're starving for more rune content, I also stream here every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time-ish. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye bye